Our focus in today's lesson is on themes in Once Upon a Time by Gabriel Okara. We want to begin with the lesson objectives. At the end of the lesson, you should be able to do the following. One, explain the meaning of themes. Two, give a brief overview of the poem. Three, read the poem. Four, discuss the themes in the various stanzas of the poem. All right. Now let's begin with the first one, which is the meaning of themes. Themes are the main ideas or lessons that a poet wants the reader to learn from a poem. To put it simply, themes are the messages the poet wants to communicate to his readers. An overview of the poem. Once Upon a Time is a narrative poem by Gabriel Okara, who is a Nigerian poet. The poem de depicts the identity and cultural crisis that have occurred in the African society as a result of the so-called civilization or the advent of the Western culture, which has compelled the average African to jettison his own way of life and imbibe foreign values. <clears throat> Excuse me. The poem examines how people react in three given situations, namely when greeting someone, when welcoming someone to their house, and when saying goodbye to them. Unlike the real emotions and compassion that characterize people's reactions in the past, their reactions are now completely fake and hypocritical. They now greet with fake smiles while they are actually looking for faults that they can use to accuse you. They now shake hands without their hearts because their real love for you is determined by what you can afford financially. They welcome you verbally when you visit them. They pretend that they are happy that you visited them and they ask you to feel at home, but they're actually closing their doors against you the moment you want to extend your stay. When it's time to part, they put on a fake smile again and bid you goodbye when indeed they are saying good readers. Okay? Let's now read the poem itself. Once upon a time, son, they used to laugh with their eyes, but now they only laugh with their teeth, while their eyes block cold eyes search behind my shadow. There was a time indeed they used to shake hands with their hearts, but that's gone, son. Now they shake hands without hearts, while their left hands search my empty pockets. Once, well, feel at home, come again, uh, they say. And when I come again and feel at home once, twice, there will be no tries. For then I find doors shut on me. So I have learned many things, son. I have learned to wear my uh, to wear many faces like dresses, home face, office face, street face, host face, cocktail face, with all their conforming smiles, like a fixed portrait smile. And I have learned to, to laugh with only my teeth and shake hands without my heart. I have also learned to say goodbye when I mean good riddance, to say glad to meet you without being glad, and to say it's been nice talking to you after being bored. But believe me, son, I want to be what I used to be when I was like you, I want to unlearn all these mooting things. Most of all, I want to relearn how to laugh, for my laugh in the mirror shows only my teeth like a snake's bay fangs. So show me, son, how to laugh. Show me how I used to laugh and smile once upon a time when I was like you. So that is the poem. Uh, and so let's begin to discuss the themes. 
stanza by stanza, beginning with stanza one. Now, stanza one reads as follows. We will read it, then uh, extract the themes. Once upon a time, son, they used to laugh with their eyes, but now they only laugh with their teeth, while their eyes, block cold eyes, search behind my shadow. Now, the first thing we can see here is past versus present. The, the poem, beginning with first statement, once upon a time, uh, actually uh, gives us uh, an expression that used to begin, that was always, that is usually used to begin a story about events or incidents that happened a long time ago. Uh, in most children's stories, you often uh, hear the narrator beginning with once upon a time. It refers to a time in the past or a long time ago, perhaps when the speaker was young. It could also refer to something that happened in an imaginary world. Most of the time when, you know, you listen to tales by moonlight and people begin a story with once upon a time, it's likely a story about fantasy, uh, about something that is imagined rather than real. And so it could also refer to something, uh, of course, that happened in an imaginary world, something that is far uh, removed from reality. Such events or incidents are usually far different from what obtains in the present time. So, you know, the poem compares the past with the present. So that is the, the first thing we see here, uh, comparing the past with the present. And of course, this is also part of human life and experience. People uh, remember the good old days and want to compare the past time with the, the, what is happening right now. Now, another theme we can find right here in, in stanza one is nostalgia. Uh, nostalgia has to do with some, uh, you know, uh, recollecting the past with um, some memories, okay? So here you find that the speaker, presumably a father, is talking to his son, telling him nostalgically how things used to be. Members of his society were more genuine in their behavior in those days. The narrator is actually lamenting the moral values which existed in those good old days uh, and that those uh, moral values are virtually non-existent in the present time. So the, the poem is, is a reminder that there was a time in the past when things were really good, when people behaved well, but that the society has become so corrupt that all these uh, good values have all been eroded. And then you may ask why, of course, the, the, the poet, the, the, the speaker is referring to the good old days, uh, probably before the advent of the Western values, uh, when the Africans, you know, uh, when the Africans actually maintained their 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 moral values you know their cultural values okay but then the advent of the of the of the western colonizers actually brought in foreign values that actually uh, corrupted the the cultural values of the african society so to say so of course gabriel okara uh, is someone who has always uh, written poems, you know, that explores the the values of the African culture, you know. And uh, if you refer to some of his uh, poems, you will discover that uh, the 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 most of the time the thematic preoccupation is the African culture. Uh, in his clash with the foreign culture, okay. Uh, one of his one of his poems is "Piano and Drums," 
And if you also look at that poem, you will see this cultural crisis, okay? Now, the next theme we can find in stanza one is true love and affection. Back then, according to the speaker, people acted sincerely in their relationships with one another. They used to laugh with their eyes, the speaker said. This expression indicates how sincere or genuine they were in their actions. It implies that their smiles were genuine and their love was real, okay? So, but, so true love and affection is one of the themes, okay, of this uh, poem. Uh, still in stanza one, we see another theme, the theme of hypocrisy and insensitivity, you know? In the present time, people are hypocritical and insensitive in, their, in the way they relate with one another. This is evident in the expression, but now they only laugh with their teeth while their eyes block cold eyes search behind my shadow. This implies that they are now totally hypocritical in their actions. They may show the smiling teeth, but the smile is fake. The insincerity is evident in their eyes block cold eyes, which are busy searching behind my shadow. The expression search behind my shadow implies looking for fault or searching for something negative that could be probably used to accuse or castigate someone. So that is uh, one of the things we can learn from the poem. And that brings us to stanza two. I read, there was a time indeed, they used to shake hands with their hearts, but that's gone, son. Now they shake hands without hearts while their left hands search my empty pockets, you see? Now, the one of the themes we can find in stanza two is mutual respect and friendliness. Uh, because here we find that the speaker moves on to talk about the custom of shaking hands. In the past, they used to shake hands with their hearts. This implies that those in those days, people would greet you warmly with real happiness in their hearts. In, African, in the African society, the shaking of hands when two people meet is a demonstration of respect for each other. It is also meant to show friendly and peaceful intent. When people are at war, they wield weapons and go against their opponents for maiming and killing. But in the time of peace, people stretch forth their hands for a handshake to demonstrate that they are friendly and they are at peace with each other. So uh, that is one of the themes, you know, showing mutual respect uh, and showing friendliness. You know, when you meet someone and you shake hands with them, it means that you know them, you, you respect them, and you you have some some positive relationship with them. People uh, always avoid getting into close contact with their enemies. So shaking of hands has to do with mutual respect and friendliness. That's one of the themes that is explored in this poem. Then another theme we can extract from stanza two is materialism and lack of mutual respect. Uh, all right, Much, uh, in the old days, uh, according to the speaker, there was mutual respect and there was friendliness. But now, what you find is materialism and lack of mutual respect. You see, this is evident in the expression, but that's gone, son. You see, there was indeed, there was a time indeed they used to shake hands with their heart, but that's gone, son. You see, so uh, there is an opposite, opposite situation that is uh, that is uh, presented uh, as what is hap what is the prevailing situation right now okay now they shake hands without hearts you see while they search my empty pockets okay you see in other words they now greet you according to your financial status people no longer welcome you genuinely instead the kind of reception they give to you depends on how much they can get from you financially. This implies that true love and friendly feeling 
that characterized the shaking of hands in the past is no longer factored into interpersonal relationships nowadays. Everything is now based on money. The speaker paints the picture of how they now greet him with one hand while their left hand search his empty pockets. This shows that materialism and selfishness now dictate the way people relate with one another. The degree of love or emotions people attach to their relationship with you now depend on how much money they can get from you. They may not place any value on, on their relationship with you if you have nothing to offer financially. The moment they discover that you, you've come uh, with empty pockets, then they will shake hands without heart. So that's uh, what we find here you know, materialism and lack of uh, mutual respect. This brings us to stanza three, discussing the themes. Stanza three reads as follows. Feel at home, come again, they say, and when I come again and feel at home once, twice, there will be no tries, for then I find doors shut on me. Now, the, the theme here is that of uh, fake expression uh, and lack of true solidarity, fake expression. There's an omission here. Fake expression and lack of true solidarity. That's what we find uh, in this place. Okay, so let's, uh, let's show that something is missing here. And is missing there, okay? So fake expression and lack of true solidarity. Now here in stanza three, we find a description of the speaker's personal encounter with people who would tell him to feel at home or to come again. He later discovers that such words are mere social expressions and are not based on true love, you know? So the moment they discover that you really want to feel at home or you want to come again, they shut their doors against you. Okay, so we see here that there's a discrepancy between the words that people say and their actions. Okay, and that's the focus of this stanza. In words, they tell you to feel at home and to come again, but in action, they shut the door against you. This is the sad departure from the good old days that the speaker is referring to with so much nostalgia. In those days, people used to be truly happy that you visited them because they value their relationship with you and they were truly happy to interact with you. Today, such good values have been sacrificed on the altars of selfishness, selfishness and materialism. So that's the theme we find in uh, right here in stanza three. So let's now move on to stanza four and let's begin with reading stanza four. So I have learned many things, son. I have learned to wear many faces like dresses, home face, office face, street face, host face, cocktail face, with all their conforming smiles, like a fixed portrait smile. Now, the theme here is that of false appearance. Now, because here we find that the speaker is saying that he has now learned to wear many faces like dresses, he can now wear home face when he's at home, uh, another face in the office, another in the street, another if he's a host, he's hosting some guests. Then he, he has another face when he is in, uh, he, when he, is, he goes for a cocktail. Uh, and then each of these has its conforming smile. All of them have their conforming smiles the kind of smile that will be suitable for each face that he wears. And it's like a fixed portrait smile. So now this implies that he now puts on different facial expressions to suit different settings or different occasions. He would put on a particular facial expression when he is at home. And this will be different from the one he has to put on in the office on the street when hosting a social function and so forth. As a result, he has put on a fake smile to suit each situation or, or setting or occasion. 
He likens such a smile to a fixed portrait smile to underscore the artificiality of it all. What makes it fixed, a fixed portrait smile is the need to conform or comply with the standards or expectations of members of his society on each occasion. Now, this is evidence in the expression with all their conforming smiles. Each face he has to put on requires the type of smile that goes with it for him to be accepted by his audience. His life can now be likened to an actor who wears different masks to appear and present different appearances to suit the different roles he has to play before his audience uh, at different times, okay? So this is like wearing a different mask when you appear before a different audience. Okay, then in stanza five, I read, and I have learned to, to laugh with only my teeth and shake my hands and shake hands without my heart. I've also learned to say goodbye when I mean good readings, to say glad to meet you without being glad and to say it's been nice talking to you after being bored. Now, the, the, the theme here is that of pretentious behavior in the modern society, pretentious behavior. Here, the speaker says he has also learned to laugh with only his teeth and to shake hands without his heart. He has learned to say goodbye when he means good readings. He has now become an expert in saying glad to meet you without actually being glad. And he can now say nice talking to you even after he has just been bored. So now, in a nutshell, he has graduated from the school of hypocrisy, and he now knows how to deceive people by being politically correct with the appropriate nice words and the false politeness that goes with them. So it's about pretentious behavior, okay? That is the theme that we find quite predominant in stanza five. So like other members of his society, he now puts on a fake smile that showcases his teeth and he now shakes hands as a mere social gesture. He has learned to hide his real emotions in the pretext of saying something else. Stanza six. But believe me, son, I want to be what I used to be when I was like you. I want to unlearn all these mooting things. Most of all, I want to relearn how to laugh, for my laugh in the mirror shows only my teeth like a snake's bare fangs. You see? Now, the theme here is the desire to relearn good values. You know, uh, another thing we can actually talk about here is loss of innocence you know the 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 speaker is is actually showing that he has lost the innocence he used to have when he was a child now he has been corrupted by a corrupt society and he is nostalgically desiring to relearn the good values that he used to know when he was a child so the speaker expresses his desire to turn a new leaf and to return to genuine life, the genuine life he used to have in his childhood days when he was a child like his son. He acknowledges that something is utterly wrong with the hypocritical attitudes prevailing now in the society. He wants to go back to the past when people meant whatever they said and said exactly what they meant in their hearts. He wants to unlearn all these mooting things. He wants to rid himself of those hypocritical expressions that prevented people from showing real compassion and true love for one another. He now views that wrong way of life with total disgust. It has distorted his true identity so badly that his laugh in the mirror shows only his teeth like a snake's bare fangs. Here, the expression is next bay, is next bay fangs is used to symbolize deception and mischief. This explains 
why he now wants to get rid of that adulterated culture, uh, that corrupt, uh, that corrupt way of life. On the contrary, he wants to relearn the childlike, innocent ways of laughing sincerely. He wants to return to those days when people acted with genuine intentions without hiding their emotions in order to deceive others. So we are just picking some of the of the themes, but even from the explanation, you can see a number of themes, like the themes of deception and mischief, like uh, you know the theme of corruption, uh, the theme of of uh, moral laxity. All these are the themes you can talk about. Okay, and then uh, we move on to the last stanza, which is stanza seven. So show me, son, how to laugh. Show me how I used to laugh and smile once upon a time when I was like you. You see, this is childhood and innocence. You, you see, it is the, 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 there is a desire here. You see, the speaker continues to emphasize to his son his desire to unlearn everything he has grown up to become. He wants to get rid of his fake identity and return to his childhood days when speech and action were based on real emotions, true love and happiness, okay? Now, his plea to his son underscores his depression and highlights the irony of the whole situation. Is it not ironical that a father who should be in a position to teach his son the right way of life now wants his son to teach him? It's, it's an irony. It shows how badly the speaker wants to regain his lost innocence and true identity. So you can talk of identity crisis, loss of innocence, and all these are themes here. So these are the themes that we have seen in the poem. Many thanks for watching today's video. A big thank you to all of you out there for being part of today's episode. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, kindly subscribe to this channel. Subscribe now as a way of giving us support notification about new videos click on the bell icon you will find the bell icon click on it so that whenever a new video is uploaded you will be instantly notified if you have actually enjoyed the video like and share the video with your friends and relatives this is very important if you have any comments leave your comments below any questions, any suggestions, we would gladly receive them and respond promptly and positively to them. See you in the next video. I look forward to always seeing you in the new video.